In this video, we're going to solve one of the issues that you might experience with Chart.js data labels plugin. So for example here, I have this scale here, and this scale has a min and max value. And what is happening now is some of the data points are being shown, but for some reason, this data label is seeing also stuff that should not be shown right now because we have restricted the view. So we're going to solve this issue right now. So let's start look how to hide the specific data labels when using the min and max scale in Chart.js. So first of all, we're going to get our default code and we're going to duplicate this exact same error. So make sure you go to chartjs3.com and then this specific link here, docs, charts, we're getting started. This link is also in the description box. So, and then once you're on the site, scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code here. Oh, there's the upper one here. Copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. Then I'll just paste that all in there. I will just cut this out and put that in there. Save, refresh. All right, so now we have this here. What I want to do is, of course, have the data labels plugin or the chart.js plugin data labels. For that, you can just go to cdnjs.com and then just search for the chart.js dash plugin dash data labels or like the, this one here. Then I'm going to grab the latest version here. Right now is version 2.0. So I'm going to select this one here with the script. And then I'm going to scroll down here and paste that JavaScript file after the JavaScript library. So that's very important. First, this needs to load. And then we have this item here. I'm going to save this. Refresh. Of course, nothing happens yet. Why? Because I didn't activate it yet. So let's activate the plugin, so comma, the plugins. And I'm going to use here the plugin name which is chart data label. So basically, this is the object to register or activate the plugin. Save, refresh, there we are. So what I can do here is I can pull, move it up or down, doesn't matter. What I want to do here, and that's the more important part, is I want to duplicate this as much as possible or extend the data points and then you will see the same error. So I guess I paste this four times, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to do this one as well. Paste, 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 and paste, save, refresh. All right, so now we have a huge set of data labels here, or data data points. Now what I want to do, and this is on purpose, because if you have too wide bar, you will not see the site here. So what I'm going to do here now is, I'm going to say X, now I'm going to say a minimum, and the minimum value would be index number two, and then the max will be, let's say, number 15. If I save this, refresh, what happened? I forgot a comma here. Save, refresh. So now as you can see here, it's starting to show, but it showed this one here only. So refresh, pay attention here. As you can see, this is one of the, the bars here. Most likely number 12. So if I say here, this, if I put this on one, I will see here now the one that is there. And as you can see, now we have another one here. So this is why, if I would do only here, a few items probably will not show, but only five, then you will not see the issue here because the bar is so wide. So this is not really an issue or bug in uh, data labels. It's just a technical flaw, I would say, because they forgot to consider to only show it with the condition within the min and max. So this is why we are having this or why we're experiencing this. So if I save this, go back here, there we are. And most likely we would have it here as well if we would have some space here. So what I'm going to do now is the following. How do we solve this? Well. We have this here, and this is very important information for us. But what I need to do here first, of course, I'm going to say here plugins. And if it's in the plugins here, I'm going to say here the data labels object. And it's like this, you spell it like this with small letters. And then in here, we can say, for example, color. And if I do color here, and I will just grab here our beautiful color that we have. Uh, let's get the red one here. That'll be fine. Put that in there, save, refresh. Oh, did I miss something? Of course I missed something. I forgot this should be a comma. And here should be a comma as well. Save, refresh. There we are. So you can see here now we have the color here. But what I want to do now is I want to do something special. It's called a callback. So I'm going to put a callback in here. Instead of this color or the default color, whatever the default color is, if I'm not mistaken, the default color should be uh, hashtag triple six. So I'm going to use that one as well. So then I'm going to say here color. But now I'm going to create a callback. So I'm going, to say, I'm going to say a context. And just for now, because it's a callback, I need to use here a arrow function or 
a uh, arrow expression function and then I'm going to say here console log context save this refresh all right so open up developer tab oh there we are and then you can see your many objects what is happening is loading now the item here and what we're getting now is the information here you can see here it loads and what it really does is it, it loads and loops through all of these data indexes here and what is a data index well apparently our data index is just all of these items here or more specifically this one here so if we do a length here we would see how many we have but if we would go all to the top we should see here the first one and then we open up here index zero data index zero and data set so we already know that we can see here also the color what it would be or it's supposed to be here uh you can see the weekly sales i guess here we have 35 and further should be 18 and etc etc so it will go through all of this information here but this one here is very important because this here shows exactly the item so what i want to do here is matching to check which data set or data index we're on and if that matches with the min and max here because this here is basically referring to index number one so if i do index zero here we should see here now the number 18 at the very first one here refresh and it nicely uh, modifies into the shape that fits and you can see here number 18 this is the index one or uh, index zero now so what i'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a very simple if statement if and then what I want to do here, context dot data index, if I'm not mistaken, it's data index, am I correct? If it's data index, if data index is larger or equal to, let's say number one, I'm going to say number one here. In that case, I want to say color or return, I'm going to return the color of, uh, like this, of course, hashtag triple six else we return nothing uh, oh no sorry we will have to return something because if we do nothing it will give it the default value of hashtag triple six so i don't want that so i want to say here transparent so just make it transparent but not visible if i save this now refresh there we are so it doesn't show anymore if i do this number two you will see now it will be hard coded number one will be shown there you are number one is this this is number two so if i say here number two save refresh all right so this works but of course what i want to here is another condition and if max value would be equal to that so if ever you would have a lot of space there you want to make sure and if it's not bigger to 15 so whatever the max value is refresh here so if ever you would have some space here it will also show something here so you want to avoid that all right so now we have this what I want to do here is the final one is how do we get this? Because you might say, well, this is hard coded. That, that's not good. If I have a item here below, how do we solve that? So let's get this soft coded. To do this, I'm going to show you here the context we're on, and then I'm going to say a dot chart, and you will see now what we get. What we're basically doing now is what we call a object destructuring, and we can get here the chart object, which is basically the entire object of this here. So refresh, click. And then you can see all the information here, including the options or the config. Let's go to config, config, and in config, we can find here again, here the options and we have all of the information we have here, scales, look at that. And then you have the X and you have the min and max here. So this is basically what we call, or what I'm doing here is almost to object destructuring. If you want to understand object destructuring, I have a specific video for that. It's in the, uh, uh, as, what is that? In, in the description box as well. So what I'm going to do here now, just is to get to the canvas, or no, sorry, the config. I want to go to the scale X. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say here, chart.config, which is basically this here. Then we say options.scales.x. So if I just do this only and save and refresh, you can see here, we get all these items here. Beautiful. Now I can get the min and max. And then we're done. Basically, I'm going to grab this context and let's say here our okay, constant let's say constant x equals this and then i'm going to say here if x dot min remember because i'm in the x and then i want to get the min and then i want to say also x dot x dot max so if i have this save refresh all right so this works but let's check now if i change this to number three i change this to 
17 as you can see here automatically it aligns itself and it understands now what to do and that's basically how you solve this issue with the chart.js uh, data labels plugin so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know even more about the chart.js data labels plugin well guess what i have a whole video series here covering many different topics here about the chart.js data labels plugin i highly recommend it if you want to use this with more advanced options